All right, YouTube, it's time for a very exciting unboxing. I've been kind of telling you guys for the past few videos that I was planning something exciting for the 650. And uh, yeah, even though I don't have a hull for the 650, I have some very exciting plans in the future. The 1100 is obviously the priority project right now. Uh, so the exhaust system build is kind of on the back burner. I haven't even opened my MIG welder yet. Um, I got gas for it the other day and some filler rods, but uh, yeah, it's still sitting there in the box. It will be, it's two weeks today since I got it. Uh, anyway, the reason why I'm uh, making this video is because we have a very exciting unboxing. This is going to be an upcoming project on the 650. And I need to show you guys because my mind's going to explode from excitement if I don't. The Kawasaki 650 is going to get a serious upgrade. There's going to be some very exciting projects on my YouTube channel coming up very soon. And this is going to be one of them. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, this thing is cool. Oh man. Oh, I'm so excited right now. I am so excited right now. Holy crap. Oh man. Oh yeah. Would you look at that? Would you just look at it? AMR 300 is going to get attached to the 650. Holy snap. That is cool. I was so excited about it, I shut the camera off and ran in the house to tell Megan, but she's taking a nap. As she told me she was taking a nap, but I got so excited I forgot about it, so I ran in the house giggling. <laughs> AMR 300, which means that it displaces 300 cc's of air volume per revolution. This is a Roots supercharger. I am going to be making my own manifold, and uh, yeah, this is going to be very exciting. I'm hoping to make it so that this basically bolts directly onto the intake of the engine. So I'm going to make my own intake. I'm also considering, depending on funding, I'm considering uh, attaching this to a water-cooled intercooler that then attaches directly to the engine. I'm going to use a suck-through design so the carburetor will be mounted on one side and uh, yeah, the other side will go pretty much directly into the engine. I had a choice of uh, belts to put on it. So I chose one of these flat belts. I think they're a lot more efficient than a, uh, a V-belt. And this is a four groove one, so awesome. I'm gonna grab a wrench and pull the manifolds off. Kind of surprised that they don't ship with anything covering the holes because you don't really want stuff getting in there but also surprised that they don't have any kind of a gasket or anything there's a little piece of debris there Sounds like some sort of plastic. It's probably uh, Teflon or Teflon lined anyway. Man, that's cool. Haha. <laughs> <laughs> 
I don't think it's any different on this side, but we'll pop it off anyway. I don't think that anyone's put one of these on a jet ski yet. I know people have put them on uh, motorcycle engines and car engines and all sorts of other things, but this supercharger actually comes on a very small Subaru in Japan. And it's actually not a new unit, it's a refurbished unit. So, those are some fun details. With a supercharger and a turbocharger, you can just spin them faster and create more airflow and more boost. Uh, especially easy with a supercharger because you can just change the pulley size and then you can spin the supercharger faster and it creates more airflow. The problem that you run into is uh, inefficiency. So at a certain point, basically the airflow that's going through will end up getting very, very hot. And one way that you can take care of that problem or minimize that problem is by making the porting very efficient. So trying to shove air out of that hole into this shape of hole obviously isn't going to be very efficient so one way that i can lower the intake air charge temperature i said that kind of funny one way that i can lower the temperature of the intake air charge is simply by making a manifold on both sides that uh, matches up a lot better and i can actually get in here and clean this up i watched a video on youtube of a guy disassembling an amr 500 which is the big brother to this and uh, he had to use a hydraulic press and push some stuff apart and it looked kind of sketchy. So earlier I said that I was gonna do some porting inside of here, but I've kind of rethought that. I don't really want aluminum shavings getting into the supercharger and it would be pretty much impossible to stop that from happening, I think. I might be able to put some very thin plastic in behind the rotors and kind of get them in there somehow. But unless I can do that, I'm not going to go in here and do any porting because I don't want to ruin the supercharger before I even use it. All right, let's step out of my recording studio and head on over to the garage and see how this thing is going to attach to the 650. Beep. Welcome to my garage. You guys probably aren't that interested, but I thought I would mention what this whole area here is about. And basically BJ bought a 3D printer and I made a video of assembling it and I wanted a for one a place that was nice and clean and tidy and that little screws couldn't fall through the cracks in my bench and the other thing is that this makes for very good lighting so yeah that's why I have this area all right folks I haven't really thought this through very well because the first time I've ever seen this supercharger was a few minutes ago when I did the unboxing but I am thinking that this is probably going to get mounted something like this. A couple of videos back when I was doing the unboxing of the 1100 Kawasaki from the Jet Ski Brothers, I held a broken coupler in my hand and said that I actually might use it in an upcoming project. Well, that project was this. I was thinking about using the broken coupler to make a coupler that also had a pulley built onto it. So instead of ruining this one trying to figure out how to do that, I think I will use the other one, but I think the thread pattern here is different actually. So the plan as of now, and this might completely change, but I'm going to have to get a big chunk of aluminum or cast a piece of aluminum to actually make this coupler be a drive pulley on the outside. So the ratio that I wanna run this is two to one, or a little bit over two to one, meaning that when the engine is turning, we'll just use easy numbers, when the engine's turning 8,000 RPM, the supercharger will be turning 16,000 RPM. 
If any of you guys are keyboard warriors out there and good at using the Google machine, maybe you can find the specifications for this thing. I've been able to find some information, but uh, I can't find the maximum RPM that I can spin this. It is a AMR 300. The company name is AISIN, and it comes on some small Subaru cars that I believe are only sold in Japan. I was able to find specs on the AMR 500. It turns 16,500 RPM for max RPM, but uh, I would kind of like to know for this. I suspect in order to make a lot of power out of this engine, or enough to blow it up probably, I'll probably only have to spin this two to one or less. So the supercharger will be spinning about 14,000 RPM and the engine would be spinning about 7,000 RPM. One of the difficult parts about this is going to be bolting it on, but there's a whole lot more complexity to it than that. Um, the use of space, so whether or not the supercharger is going to actually fit in here without hitting the body. I would like to put this engine back in an X2, but currently I only have one X2 hull and two engines, so I'm going to have to do something about that at some point. I got a little off track there, but what I was trying to say is that installing this thing physically onto the engine is going to be a little bit tricky but it's actually probably the easiest part of the whole project there are some other complexities like trying to figure out jetting of a supercharged curb trying to figure out if i'm going to be able to get it to idle correctly and start correctly because with a suck through design uh, basically what's going to happen is as soon as the engine starts turning over it's going to start blowing a whole bunch of air into the engine so Normally at idle on your engine, what determines the airflow through the carburetor is the movement of the pistons. So the volume that the engine is displacing is the amount of air that is being drawn through your carburetors. With this thing mounted on there, when the engine starts and is running around, 50, let's say 1200 RPM, this thing is going to be moving 2400 RPM and trying to suck a lot of air through the carburetor. When the butterfly is closed on the carburetor, that could cause some issues. It might start pulling fuel from the high-speed circuit. It might pull a excessive amount of fuel through the low-speed circuit, or it might actually damage the carburetor. So what might have to happen with this, I might have to uh, put some sort of bypass in it, and that could get complex because there's not a lot of room in there. And basically what a bypass valve would do is make it so that when I let go of the throttle, air would basically circulate out of the charge side. So instead of going into the engine, the pressure would circulate back into the intake and just keep looping through the supercharger. So it could get complex. I'm not sure if I'll test it without making a bypass and then add one if it's needed, or if I'll just put one in so that I don't end up with trouble. I really wanted to put a blow off valve on this and I was going through my head as to how I would design that. I was thinking about actually making a hole through the side of the hull and having it so that when you let off the throttle it made that psh sound. I had a little turbocharged car a few years ago and the most fun thing about driving it was that when you let off the throttle it made that whoosh, whoosh. Anyway, um, the problem with doing that in this case is that because it's a draw through design and not a push through design, and what I mean by that is the carburetor will be mounted on one side of the supercharger and it will pull fuel through the supercharger and push it into the engine. So we'll say it's mounted like this, the carburetor will be mounted here, and so it's pushing fuel and air into the engine through, so it's drying the air through the carburetor. The problem with venting it off to the atmosphere is that you would be venting off fuel and air to the atmosphere. So, yeah, probably won't be doing that. Anyway, uh, very exciting. I have a lot of projects on the go and I still haven't even unboxed my welder. So maybe that's what you'll see next.
I know that 2020 has been a crappy year for a lot of people. I just have one more thing to say before I end this video. Bring on 2021. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.